All right, morning everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Happy that born was day, Killer, Killer Mike. Mike. Happy born day, Killer Mike. Drop on the clues bombs for Killer Mike, man. That's Killer Mike and LP. Don't let the devil, man. Let me tell you something. Michael Render, Killer Mike has a new album coming out called Michael. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna put too much sauce on it because y'all gonna say I'm biased because that's my partner and one of my top five favorite MCs of all time. But man, crazy. When he drops, you'll see. All right, man. I'm sure Killer Mike will stop doing man. when he drops that album. Man. All right, well, let's get in some front page news. Hey, Teslin Figaro, good morning. Teslin Figaro, the hood whisperer. Yes, good morning, Charlemagne the God, DJ MV Breakfast Club, and the ET. Now, now, I just want to start off with some quick sports. Last night, the Bucks beat the Heat 138 22, the Nuggets beat the Timberwolves 122 113, and the Grizzlies beat the Lakers 103 93. Of course, Brooks and LeBron kind of were chirping at each other all game. And after the game, this is what Brooks said about LeBron. Exchange. There are people out there that say maybe maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess what what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's I was waiting for that. I was expecting him to do that game four, game five. He wanted to say something when I got my fourth foul. Um, shouldn't have saying that earlier on. I poke bears. Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me forty. Why they got to call a man old? Now, Brian, I need you to drop 40 next game yeah, But now. that's the thing, you right? You got to show up for the, us old is next game now. That's the thing. Now, God dang. Now, Dylan Brooks last night scored 12 points, one rebound. Now, that old man dropped 28 on you in 12 rebounds. Bron, so how you call him old? You got to drop 40. I didn't. I, I never thought I would get to the point where Braun would be up here with us OGs. All right? <laughs> but I guess he is at this point, right? He's considered old in the league. He's been there 20 years. Braun, you got to drop 40 next game. And how the Lakers lose to the Grizzlies without Ja Morant? And did Giannis yeah. play last night? I fell asleep at 9 o'clock. Giannis didn't play last night. Because I'm an old man. Giannis didn't play last and night. Then, and then the Heat, the Bucks beat the Heat? Wow. Okay. Yeah, LeBron, don't let that Canadian talk to you like that. 40. I, mean, that I need 40, 40 next him. game, Bron. That's and I right. ain't no Laker fan, but I want to see you drop 40, Bron. All right. What else you got, Taz? Yeah, it was a really, really good game. Um, just want to say my special happy birthday. I'll say also to Killer Mike. I'm glad you guys did that special shout out. So yeah. I will be going to Atlanta for the sold out Black Effect Podcast Festival. So don't be surprised if I'm reporting live from the from Blue Flame. The Blue Flame. There you go. <laughs> I'll be in there with you. The Blue Flame with Daytime Killer Mike shit. and. That's right. And his wife, my sister, Shay. So shout out to him. Yep. So Biden uh, issues an executive order to make child and home care cheaper. So wanted to give some good news uh, with President Biden signing an executive order Tuesday to advance affordable caregiving and support workers. Now, the order includes cabinet level agencies taking steps to fix the nation's child care and long term care system, such as lowering co-payments for services and other provisions that will seek ways for Medicare and Medicaid dollars to go further. Now take a listen to what President Biden had to say about the executive order. The executive order I'm about to sign is the most comprehensive set of actions any administration has taken to date to increase access to high quality child care and long term current care and support for the caregivers. You know, uh, under this order, almost every federal agency will collectively take over 50 actions to provide more peace of mind for families, and dignity for care workers and uh, who deserve jobs with good pay and good benefits. The executive order doesn't require any new spending. It's about making sure taxpayers will get the best value for the investments they've already made. Okay. Yep. So good thing. This was, uh, you guys may remember when they were pushing the infrastructure bill Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, early on in the administration, this was pushed to the side. Uh, and so it wasn't able, they they couldn't get support early on. So now they bumped it back up as they should, as Democrats prepare uh, to run in 2024. So I'm excited about this and thought folks should know people spend a lot of money on child care every year, about $17,000. So this should be pretty helpful. And, and, and that, I hope, hopefully that trickles down to the people who need it. And when I say the people who need it, the black people in the hood. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well. We'll see you in a little bit, Tesla. Figure out this is a short one. We were talking about yeah, Kelly Mike more and all news. that. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do it in a couple minutes, all right? All right, peace. All right, get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. It's 420, so get your ass up, light up, and uh, it's 420. It's the Breakfast Club on BET. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV. Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now we got Teslin Figaro on the line. Good morning, Tez. Tez, Good the morning. hood whisperer. Absolutely. Good morning, family. Just go through some quick sports. The Grizzlies beat the Lakers last night, 103-93.
The Bucks beat the Heat 138-122, and the Nuggets beat the Timberwolves 122-113. I can't believe that the Heat beat, I mean, the, the Bucks beat the Heat without Giannis, and I can't believe the Lakers uh, didn't seize the moment and beat the Grizzlies without uh, John Morant. Yeah, they were, they lost by 10. They were down by like 20 or something at one point, 21 mm. at one point. They came back, but yeah, it was it was a very physical game. It was an early game, too. I was asleep. I was in bed by 8.45 last night. Yeah, game started at 7.30, I think it was. It was I early. Am. Really? Mm-hmm. Very oh. early. It was surprising. All right, now what, what are we starting with, man? Are we starting with this the guy that uh, the inmate that passed away because of bed bugs? Yes, that was wild. Uh, brace yourself for this one. It, it just even reporting this makes me queasy. Uh, the family of 35 year old Georgia man Lashawn Johnson, who died in a bed bug infested jail cell last year, is now demanding a criminal investigation into his death as well as closure and replacement of the jail. Now, the family attorney Michael Harper said that Thompson was found unresponsive in his filthy cell on September 19, 2022, after being eaten alive by insects. Mm. He went on to say that the jail cell Mr. Thompson was housed in was not fit even for a diseased animal. Uh, When Thompson was arrested three months earlier, he was put into a psychiatric unit of the jail uh, because officials had determined that he had mental health issues. His attorney said that officers and medical staff at the jail noticed Thompson was deteriorating, but they did nothing. And when they found his body unresponsive, uh, they did not administer CPR because in her words, she freaked out. Mm. Uh, The correctional officer actually said she freaked out. According to Fulton County Medical Examiner's report, Thompson's body was covered in bed bugs with no obvious signs of trauma, uh, and they did determine his death as undetermined. Now, in the meantime, the sheriff's office said that they have taken immediate action, uh, which includes spending $500,000 to address the infestation of bed bugs and uh, new protocols for security rounds and adding additional staff uh, to help on overcrowding. Uh, and so today they're also doing a press conference to demand a federal investigation. I'm so confused. How do you determine somebody's death uh, undetermined, right? That's number mm-hmm. one. And, and number two, this man had to be screaming for help, right? Like you're not going to get eaten alive by anything and not be yelling and screaming, That's you know, at the crazy. top of your lungs, screaming for your life. So yeah. they just ignored the brother? Yeah, it was a slow process. Um, you know, it wasn't like all, you know, at one time, but ha- having the infestation, you know, Jesus slowly eaten Christ. away slowly deteriorating. Uh, they said he deteriorated over time, but he just never got uh, the medical help and and basically just let him, you know, stay there in, in filth until eventually it took over his body. And so that's what the federal investigation will do. We'll actually go back in and, you know, I, I assume uh, have the medical examiner make a determination. And once they do that, they can continue uh, with that lawsuit and that's see horrible. if there's any criminal charges that they can file as well. That's how I mean, j- jails aren't supposed to be the rich Carlton. But you know, jail shouldn't be a death sentence if you're not sentenced nah, to death. You not know no what bed I mean? bugs and now, nah, but you know, most jail, a lot of jails are whether it's roaches, whether it's infested with with mice, whether it's bed bugs, which is disgusting. Oh my goodness! I mean, yeah. at least at least make them livable human conditions. Like I said, it ain't supposed to be no five star hotel, but at least make them livable conditions for a human. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What what else we got? What else we talking about? Facebook. Yes, Facebook. Uh, In case anyone wants to see if they can get the bag from Facebook, uh, Facebook users who had an active account any point between May 2007 and December 2022 can now apply to receive a piece of the parent company's Meta's $725 million settlement related to the Cambridge analytical scandal. Now, Meta in December agreed to settle a longstanding class action lawsuit, uh, which accused Cambridge, who worked with the Trump campaign to access private user information of more than 87 million Facebook users as an attempt to influence the presidential election. Now, the claim form, which will only require a few personal details and information about your Facebook account, can be filled out online or printed or submitted by mail. Now, the form only takes a few minutes to complete and must be submitted by August 25th to be included uh, in in the settlement. You can complete the claim at www.facebookuserprivacysettlement.com. So if you wanna see if you have some money coming to you, I thought this was an important story, submit that claim and see what happens. All right, and lastly, you gotta talk about this Toronto Blue Jays pitcher and his wife. You gotta talk about this flight. (laughs) I just thought this was disgusting. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so many of you may have seen it on Twitter. I wanted to see what the family thinks. So Toronto Blue Jays pitcher Anthony Bass uh, has sparked heated debate on social media after claiming that a United Airlines employee made his pregnant wife clean up a food mess left by his children on the flight. Now, Bass wrote on Twitter, the flight attendant at United just made my 22-week pregnant wife traveling with a five-year-old and a two-year-old get on her hands and knees to pick up popcorn mess by my youngest daughter. But not everyone, DJ Envy, agreed with the outrage, and they took to social media to say that he is responsible for his own mess. One user commented, be a decent human, and if you're going to give your kid popcorn on the plane, be prepared to pick it up. Uh, another person said pregnant women can bend. They may not want Damn. to, but the solution to that is not not to give your child popcorn on the plane. And another user who identified themselves as a former flight attendant said that a flight attendant is there for safety, not to pick up after your children. So do you think mm. you should pick up after your own damn kids or Yeah, I mean, what? I can see both sides. Yes, I think that you yeah. should pick up after your own damn kids, but I do think you have to take into consideration the young lady was pregnant. So if it was difficult, and you know, if you've ever seen, you know, I travel with my family. So when I, yeah. I when my wife is pregnant, you know, and we got, you know, two two other kids or at, at at one point three other kids, I see how it is, how difficult it is for her to do certain things. So I'm there to pick up the popcorns. So if I was the flight attendant and I saw a pregnant woman with some other kids, I probably would help. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, she's <laughs> twenty two years she's twenty two weeks pregnant. She has a two year old and a five year old. The popcorn I'm sure fell out. Yes, I get it. And and I'll be honest with you. I've been on some of them planes and I've been seeing messes on some of them planes, cookie yeah. crumbs and all types of stuff. And not to say that the flight attendant had to pick it up, but there is a cleaning crew before and after that that's their job. They're right. supposed to clean up the plane and they could clean up the plane. That child was two years old and five years old. And it's not it like and, difficult. And, and it's not like she was encouraging the kid to spill popcorn. No, nah, she didn't say throw the popcorn <laughs> around. I'm sure I'm the saying. kid dropped it by accident. Exactly. We on a exactly. flight and you want me to bend down on my knees and pick it up? No, I'm not picking well, it up, first, no. No, my yeah, and I thought, I thought no. that that was my point of view. Like, when were you supposed to pick it up? Because you can't get out your seat. You know, it's only certain times you can get out with your seatbelt. So, did they want them to do it before they got off the plane, or like where was the time that she was really going to have for anybody, pregnant or not, to get on their knees and pick it up? I, I just think about like if you got to catch another flight, you got to get off the plane. You know, where was the time? I guess that she wanted her to. Pick it up. Was, I have was no the first idea. Thing I was thinking some of these flight yeah. attendants be nasty for no damn Absolutely. reason. Absolutely, I've been I, I've been seeing that and, and experiencing that. I understand that you might be having a bad day, but you know you don't have to pro project you know that bad day onto the passengers of the airplane because we all just trying to get to where we're going. That's it. And I'll be honest, if I was on that flight and seen that pregnant woman on the on her hands and knees picking up that popcorn, I would have helped her. Cause I know what it is to have kids and have young kids and trying to handle everything together. You know, I got six of them, so I would have helped on that. Well, flight. I would have counted the kernels first. If, if there's only like two kernels left, I was like, oh, she got it. I'm saying she already down there. She got it. You know what I'm saying? No, you wouldn't. You would have helped. I would have counted the kernels. That's all. I would have counted the kernels. I would have counted the kernels. Helped I would have looked and be like, oh, it's only two left. She got it. No, you know what I mean? You'd have helped her. I'm like that sometimes when you sitting in your seat. And I'm gonna tell you something else. You know how you be sitting down, you be offering to help women with their bags. I got to the point where I stopped doing that because right. women be, don't, don't be wanting help. Some women want so, help. No, yes, we do. I, I look okay. every time somebody don't help me, I look and say, I mean, are you going to help? Okay. Or what are you going to do? So, yeah. See, that's how I am. Some of these women be like, nah, I got it. I got it. I don't yeah, need some, help. Some, I'm like, some okay. of them do, but, okay. but most of the time they do need help. And, and I have no problem helping them. I have no problem helping them either. Mm -hmm. You know, I just been scorned because some women just be like, I don't need your help. All right. Well, they probably feel it's like you're short and you probably can't reach the, the upper end of the, of the plane. So that's why they probably and, feel it bad and, for and you. And guess what? They, they, they can be right about that. See? <laughs> well, thank you, Tez. We appreciate you. No problem. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. And, and make sure you subscribe to Tesla and Figaro's podcast, Great Shot, No Chase on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. And check Tez out uh, this Saturday on the Woman in Podcasting panel at the Sold Out Black Effect Podcast Festival in ATL, Shorty. All right. Now, yep. now, when we come back, we have author and therapist Resma Menikim joining us. And we're going to kick it with him when we come back. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club on BET. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.